we just don't give a damn where Metallica will be and where form will end up in. Hi friends, it's Andriy Vasilenko and welcome to Metallic Geek, where we are over-analyzing our favorite f band. Selling out, going mainstream, becoming pop, catching on musical trends, whatever you call it, Metallica has been accused of it more than any other metal band. Since their second album, since Fade to Black, and on each subsequent Metallica record, there are things that people complain about. That Metallica are betraying their true fans that are following more money than true metal. Despite the fact that it is not an uncommon thing, almost everyone followed that path, especially in the 90s. And Metallica happened to just be the most in-face example of that. And they're just too big of a target to not hit it. Selling out has been one of the most milked Metallica topics, and it makes no sense by large. And today we we'll give it another spin. <laughs> and the name of the podcast is the justification of that. We like to go deep in where it makes no sense anymore. So we're gonna to take every Metallica album and try to find the least and most metal bits on each, or respectively the most and least pop selling out soft pieces on it. Take into consideration many criteria, such as uh, how distorted heavy the song is versus how more of a clean it is in regards of sound and lyrics and so on. Just if it feels more metal or more less metal. Get comfy and enjoy the discussion. Traditionally, we are doing it in the reverse chronological order, starting with the latest Metallica record, Hardwired to Self Destruct. I hope it changes soon, because it's been again a long time. So, on Hardwired, we have 12 songs. 13, if you consider a lot of summer. And on average, it is a smooth, medium album. It has a lot of things that Metallica did before, but not to the extreme extreme, you know? There's no defined ballad, ballad, and no defined thrashy thrasher. And so the most soft, most accessible beat on it would be Hell and Fire touches this sound. But uh, I would think that the bit we are seeking is intro from Man Unkind, where we hear the bass and guitar duo, all clean, plus it's in major key, and metal is mostly in minor, because it's a more dark scale. So yeah, Man Unkind intro, but what is the most opposite to it on the album? Apparently something very fast, thrashy, we have a couple moments of it, like Hardwired and Spit Out the Bone. Hardwired is short, but very tight. Spear of the Bone is long, but uh, a bit slower. But I would consider Hardwired. Among other things, because it has a so A perfect opener for the album, like no bullshit. Yeah. Then Death Magnetic. It's also a kind of soup of everything Metallica tried before, but to a more extremes in both directions, which Hardwired lacked. It also had an instrumental, also had a couple real ballads, including Unforgiven 3, which was intended to be the ballad, and a couple of really brutal songs, including My Apocalypse and All Nightmare Long. There's everything on the album, and we may have a hard time picking the one bit from each of the sides. So, the least metal bit. Hmm. At first I thought the interlude from Suicide and Redemption. The really emotional one. You don't want to, to pump the iron on it. You want to just sit and cry in the corner. But, but then I remembered that the intro from Unforgiven 3 features no rock instruments at all. It's piano, strings and, and other stuff that is not like Metallica band members do, even though James played the piano on the record. And the least poppy my Apocalypse, how about it? It's Dark Sea of 2000s. Sintangir. It is probably one of the best examples when the opposites attract. There's no ballad, except maybe one song, which is The Unnamed Feeling. But it is purely because it has softer parts. And such sections are in the other songs. For example, in Saint Anger, the verse. Saint Anger. But then it goes into the extremist part of the album, the chorus of Saint Anger, which is essentially Metallica from the 80s, but with a different sound. Fuck it up, fuck it, no regrets, so yeah, the verse and the chorus are the extreme opposite of the Saint Anger, the song, 
Or we could go with the unnamed feeling too. The soft parts versus the breakdown. It's this section when James wants ice cream. I wanna cry, I wanna scream. This is brutal. This is pure rage with also a couple of fuck. Fuck! You might expect what I say about reload. And I will say it. The Unforgiven 2 is the most poppy thing on Reload. Me. Even though it's deeper than you think, The Unforgiven 2 is a very heavy song lyrically and in terms of meaning what James put into it. But let, let's just agree on it. It is the most poppy thing on the album. But what is the opposite of it? <laughs> what should you think about it? Fuel! It's over 200 BPM, it's speed metal. Yeah. It has profanity. The only f on the both albums. But actually, I would say the more dirty part on the album is uh, Dirty Whore on Prince Charming, I guess. I'm the dirty, dirty whore. Load! Well, and here I'll try not to be predictable. I would say until it sleeps, because it was the shocking moment when people saw the music video and heard the song. Where do I say? I won't follow that path. So let's seek something more original than that kind of conclusion. The least metal part of the album, let's say the hero of the day. The it's in a major key, it's slow, emotional, clean. And the most brutal part on the album, actually, there is a couple. Ain't My Bitch has a lot of bitches. It counts like semi-profanity. <laughs> it's pretty fast, even though it barely scratches the 170 BPM. Fuels over 200. But if you listen further into Hero of the Day, you'll hear a almost trashy moment. Like if you pick it out of context, it would not make the right impression of Loader Reload. People would think it much metal the album, actually. And so the most and least uh, poppy moments on the album are within one song, Hero of the Day. The Black Album, well... Nothing else matters. Yeah, that's no-brainer. The, 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 the most non-Metallica song on the album, even though it's considered a classical Metallica tune now, but it turned out great. And yeah, that opened a lot of doors for them and just broke some limitations in their heads, what they could do. But the most metal one, well, there's a problem, I guess, because there's only a couple of fastish songs, Holier Than Tao, and Through the Never, I guess, and The Struggle Within. There's no swearings on the record, except if you consider hell, which the struggle within has. What a hell makes them a bit further from the pop side. What the hell? What the hell? Plus, it's fast, it's uh, just a little bit of the 80s on the record. The most commercially successful one in Metallica and Metal History at all. Nothing else matters, and the struggle within. And justice for all, well, here you might have some surprises. But not in regard to the most brutal one. It of course Darth Ziv, there's no question about it. It's the fastest Metallica song, the most hard to perform, it has profanity, and the just cranked up sound of Metallica had developed in the 80s, this, the conclusion, the final test of the 80s for them. But what its antagonist, the most popular one? There's nothing actually to consider it at full value, like one is a ballad, but it's literally half thrash. And the opening, even though it's full of clean guitar, this terrible silence stops in there. it's in uneven time signature, the subject is very heavy, very disturbing. So I would not pick anything of one as the most selling out part, even though it's again, it was a breakthrough on MTV, Grammy, and everything, but it's far more metal than, say, Fade to Black. So I would pick as the least metal beat on Injustice for All is the intro from the title track. Once again, major key kinda buys it. Out of context, you wouldn't tell, it would proceed to one of the most progressive Metallica tracks ever. Yeah, how could I forget the middle section from To Lose To Die? Master of Puppets. Once again, similar to the one case, Welcome Home Sanitarium is not that of a easy to listen to in an average listener. Intro to Battery is clean, but it's pretty chromatic and intense. It immediately jumps to the metal. 
the Orion interlude is far more accessible. It's like a, it sounds pretty much like a classical piece of music. It's in a walled space. It has it has distortion guitar, but it plays the harmony. The drums are not blasting. So yeah, let's stop on this. The interlude from Orion is the least metal part. Interlude from Master of Puppets is simple on the ear, but let's stop on Orion. And the most metal, least pop beat on Master of Puppets? Hmm. Damage Incorporated would be too obvious. It's weird, it's fast, it has swearing, it's hard to play, it's not radio friendly. Master of Puppets has a lot of time signature changes, which is counter pop, but uh, it would be too easy again. So let's go with Disposable Heroes, Soldier Boy part, the anti breakdown. Rides the Lightning. The first experiment is going less metal on Fade to Black, and not only on Fade to Black. Form the Beltos is pretty moderate paced song. The Call of Tulu has a lot of clean parts and is uh, slowish and fight fire with fire intro w what is a predecessor of orion classical vibe it's a very misleading moment you right away have metal in your ears after that i wonder how many people were like what the fuck when they heard fight fire with fire for the first time so let's do that again two opposite things within one track and as an alternative pick, let's say, uh, so be it, Fade to Black and Trapped Under Rice, how about that? And finally, Kill Em All. Well, that was the first try, they just did whatever they had at hand, all their riffs, all the songs, from Mustaine, from James, from everyone, even Cliff just came and said, I have bass solo, can you, do you allow me to record it, Go, go for it. The interlude from Phantom Lord with a clean guitar, Mustaine wrote it. Probably the only part on the album without distortion, yeah? And the most male part, again, I have a couple contesters. Whiplash is pretty much the standard thrash tune. With a couple of swearings and just the general attitude, we just don't give a damn. We are metallic and will be in whatever form we'll end up in. Or, alternatively, what could be more anti-pop than a freaking bass solo? Especially with the sound that Cliff Burton brought in, with all the musical twists and turns. It was definitely not a radio-friendly one. It was unheard of before, actually, to do such a composition, which was actually half improvisation, so yeah, Anastasia is basically the first progressive track of Metallica, in all kinds of ways, in time signatures, in sound, in general attitude, in composing, and what Cliff did on the stage with it, well, it cannot get more metal than that. So yeah, Phantom Lord, Interlude, and Whiplash slash Anastasia. Pick your one. This is the first time I've recorded this podcast since 8 months, since the war began, and it felt like therapy to me. It felt like the pre-war days when things were... I could plan, I could do stupid jokes, you know, about Metallica. And if you wanted to continue, let me know. In the comments, donate, and on the podcast platforms, rate, review it. All the links in the description. Thanks for support, thanks for listening. It's Andriy Vasilenko, and hear you next time, friends.